I've looked at various switches and industrial components from China via eBay in the past and I thought this would be quite a good one to look at because there's a little trick to getting the knob off this. So this is a very common switch. Uh, this one came from World Chips and it's described as a three position selector rotary switch power ignition. Not sure about the ignition bit, but I suppose technically speaking you could use it in able to ignition in an industrial piece of equipment. It's only $1.57 and that seems to be a really common price for these. And it's compatible with many of the other uh, switches in the same format, including the same contact blocks. And when you actually turn the switch in this, it's got a central off position and then it's got a on position on the other side. And if I turn this round and then rotate that switch, you'll see first one of the uh, switch contacts moves out, both off, and then the other one moves when it's switched to the other position. The contacts, as is common in these, are visible through little windows at the side. These ones are fairly diffuse, so it's not so easy. And they do, they're spring-loaded and they make contact, and then uh, the plunger moves down a bit further to make sure that you've got a solid contact. And I'm not sure what these would be rated current-wise. What are they rated? Does it say in the side? It says 10 amps. Not sure I'd overly trust it for that, but it's good for acting as a, you know, to switch relays or control components or inputs to PLCs. The contact blocks seem to be compatible amongst them all, and uh, you can therefore just slide another block in the back. And I wouldn't stack them too high, but this means that when you stack that on, the plungers push right through. So you've got this normally closed contact now that uh, opens in that position, and uh, this one, it's now got two normally open contacts that close. And again, it's, uh, it's making contact in there, you can actually see it better in there now. Uh, it's making contact, uh, and then the movement continues down the spring to actually make sure it's a decent contact. So they seem okay that way. Now, one of the tricks with these, whereas if you, when you're putting this through a panel, if you're using the uh, simple button version, which just is a plunger that pushes against those switches, when you're mounting that into a panel, you, in the case of the button one, you just pull it off until the uh, front cap pops off get your panel, uh, put the assembly in like this, and snap the button back in. Then by using the uh, ad different adjustments of the locking ring at the back and the front bezel, you can then fine tune it to the so the button is flush with the front. However, it's different for this one. This one's fairly obvious how it comes apart, but that one's not. Let's uh, screw that back on before I end up losing bits. To get the uh, front off this, don't grab it and pull it, uh, because if you do, you'll break the catch mechanism. See this white insert? Hook a screwdriver in there, or your fingernail if it works, uh, and just lever that out, and this slides out, this little locking mechanism. And at that point, while that's out, you can then pull this off. And the way that works, I'll just zoom in on this so you can actually see, and then I'll zoom back out again. The These two out tags here are what locks it onto the central column, and once that's clipped on, if you push the mechanism back in the latch, it clicks in and it stops them flexing back, and that's what holds this in place. So you won't be able to easily pull that off without actually pulling the white uh, release mechanism. So let's uh, zoom back out. So to mount this one, pretty much the same arrangement. You've got the bezel here. It goes through a standard 22 millimeter hole. That screws on and you've got a rubber uh, sort of gl gland really at the back of this and an adjustment nut. So you can get it into position and then the rubber grand, grand, gland stops it from slipping around once it's been tightened. So get it in position, and note that when you put this back on, it could go on in various positions. So to you have to sort of get a feel of where the switch is, get it into its middle position, line the, uh, the mechanism up pointing in the direction of the off position, and then click this down. At that point, I think I'd uh, wind this out a little bit more, get the lock ring tightened out the back, and then finish it off by tightening the front one just to actually put that under tension so that the mechanism can't slip round when you're actually switching into different positions. 
So let's take a look inside this. So I'm going to pop that off again and see how it activates the buttons. I wonder how many people have just tried to prise this off and they've burst the catch because usually if when you try that, the little black uh, tags there uh, break off. So the contact blocks are held on by these sort of clips here. And to be honest, the easiest, cheapest way to get one of these contact blocks is just to buy another switch. Uh, if you wanted one switch with two contact block sets, just buy two switches at the same time, and that leaves you a complete uh, switch and uh, bezel mechanism as well. So inside this, let's put this back on. Oop, should push it in before I put the locking mechanism in. There we go. Inside this is simply a cam that rotates, and when the cam rotates, it uh, basically rides up in these sloping uh, buttons, and it forces them down. And these continue right through. At the back of this, you'll find that the, when you put another switch module on, it pokes into the uh, bottom of this, and that uh, is what allows it to actuate both in a fairly modest stack uh, through the middle of all the switches. But as I say, don't expect, don't put loads and loads on, because there is a slight tolerance, and at the end, there's a risk that the very last switch might not operate that well if you put like a stack of 10 or something on. So let's take a look inside this. I'm going to zoom back in again because this is quite small, but not too far. So to get this off, this is hooked on over these lugs. So I'm guessing this just hooks off like this. This is where it all springs to bits. It usually does. Okay. So what we've got here, and if I'm going to have to press this very carefully, there's a spring inside that green shaft and that holds a contact position in place. But as it pushes down, once it's made contact, that spring then starts being pressed and it can continue to travel down while applying pressure to those contacts. Now I will say that I can see the contacts rocking each other. I don't think that's a really big issue though. And if I was to lift this out, this is probably tempting fate. Oh yeah, there's a spring. So there's a spring that uh, takes a plunger up. There's the spring inside the contacts, and if I lift that, usually you can just lift this, oh, there goes the spring, and pop it out. So the contacts, it's not just pressed, it is actually contact uh, materials that have been riveted in to the little plate. And these usually come out as well, although I may have to unscrew it. I should also mention these uh, switch uh, blocks, uh, they split into two halves. Uh, so this should come out as well. Let's take a look at the contacts in this. So you loosen it up until you can get it out. Is this going to come out? Might not come out. Yep, there it comes. It's quite a friction fit. So once again, the contacts have been uh, pressed in and riveted. That's quite interesting. That's a... Uh, Confidence inspiring. I'm not sure what the metal they're made of though. I'm guessing that might be steel plate, but I'm not sure what the contacts themselves will be. It's hard to tell with the magnet in the in the vicinity of the steel. Um so that's uh they're quite neat little switches. Certainly they cost a fraction of if you were a prototype something, it would cost a fraction of uh, buying them in from a UK or, or American or European supplier of professional equipment, but I wouldn't recommend them, as I say, for, for an actual factory where other people are going to be using the equipment just in case something goes wrong and it goes all sort of liability central. Cover your arse, as they say. But yeah, that's quite neat. It's quite nice inside. It's good for personal use. I've just realised something I didn't spot before. I noticed when I pushed the button, there was a slight wobble in the contact and I thought it was just maybe the movement of the spring against it. But in reality, in the contact block here, if that's the contact with its sort of the domed contact coming down, and then the spring up to the sort of little pin that holds the spring in place, as soon as that makes contact, this angled section here means that any movement of the contact further down slides the contact that direction. So technically speaking, it's effectively wiping the contact. It's a self-cleaning contact.
So that's what this sort of wobble effect was. And it's quite nice. It's really simple that there's just that angled channel in there that just wipes the contact each time it's pushed in. That's quite a smart feature. Well, since I've gone this far, and since I've now pinged a spring right across the room, and this ain't going back together now, I thought I'll take the contacts out from the contact plates and we'll see what they're made of. So I got one of the contact plates, well I actually got two, I got the fixed contact and the moving contact, gripped them in a pair along those pliers and then used a pair of side cutters inappropriately to grip them by the side, bite right in and then prise them out and it takes a lot of force. The result is that the contacts look coppery coloured um, inside but with that silvery plating on them and they're not attracted to a magnet at all. So um, I would say they're either copper or copper alloy with a coating of, well, I doubt it's silver. It could be nickel or it could be tin. Um, either way, that's good. It means they are proper electrical contacts and that just leaves the question then. If the contacts are good, uh, proper contacts, if the mechanism's good, particularly the self-wiping function, and the everything lines up well, and the mechanisms seem quite well made. Why are they so cheap? Is it just the fact that these are mass produced for the Chinese market for their own factories, and we benefit by you know being able to buy them from you know via eBay for our own personal projects? Either way, it's a good result. These are really quite acceptable. <laughs>